ko makalimot and um, I don't know actually nanong gamay ra mo nga mag-attend no every time we're having our class asa di ang uban do you know see Yes. Democracia. Sinika. Will I attend? Sinika. Will I attend? Dance. Attend. Dance. Or will I get shy? Appeal. Will I get shy? Attend. Attend. At the meeting. So maybe I should not forget to screenshot, no, everyone. Or makita man siguro pa sa recording. So, you can see all the attendance, attendance. See. Pina mani ka yes, sir. Pina mani mo gani? 15? 15 na day mo? Si Arnie? Kinsa naman ni sila? Si Arnie, si Nika, si Erniel. Si Erniel, nag-message sa ako kung wala man yata ni sa tendence si Erniel. Erniel? Ano na si Erniel? Ha? Si Erniel, o wala yung attendance, attendance, kaisa ra ang session. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am, regarding sa attendance, ma'am, mukha limot ko always sa mag-close sa dayong to. Then like an una po ng Tuesday, di di ma-open ang attendance. Then tell karon sa... Karon, di ma-open? No, di di. Wala ko makakalimot ang una pa. Yes, no, I'm just wondering, kay there are 15 na every time mag-classy ka, tag-unong ra ang mag-attend. So I don't know what's happening. Always masad ako man mag-attend sa class, ma'am. Yeah, that's why I was wondering, Arniel. Arniel, no? So Arniel, to next story, hindi ko pabalo. Yes, ma'am. Kaya nga, no, wala'y attendance ka di rin, ah. And then, message message ka. So, kinsa pa may attendance attendance. So, I don't know kinsa pa wala for me. Si Kiano, Pat. Kinsa pa? How Pat? Kaisa, si Arnie. Unsa man ni si Arnie, guys? Kaya wala pa ni? O, si Arnie. Is kaya wala ka Arnie, no? Message message man ka si Nika. Yes, ma'am. Ano naman ni si Nika? Makalimot ko alin sa attendance, ma'am. Then mag-close da yun, then size na dili ma-open. Okay, I'm just checking kay... Pero always masada ko mamag-attend dili asad ka pa. Pag-dili mo ka-tendance, reklamo mo na, because I'm gonna be... Hindi ka... Attendance. Ha? Kinsa man? Kinsa di ka-attendance? Si Ronyel, kinsa di ka-attendance? Tuesday. Kinsa? Say kinsa? Last meeting, but huwag ko ka-attendance. Kinsa man? Kinsa man? Kinsa man? Kinsa man? Pakaldo, ma'am. Doon na pakaldo. Pakaldo, ma'am. Saan niyo? Katon 22. 6, 7. There is a, there is a time, ang good, no? So, like, taman 7 p.m. Kung makalimot ta, like, mahumanta 6.30 or 6 kapin. Then I will... 5... PM pa to ako, ma'am, pero question mark siya. Last... Kasi minay lang ang inyong internet sa mga attendance. Anyway, so for today, that's it for today, and this is in problems. So attempted. So we had our quiz, one. 
So, naisa, wala ka attempt. Ako, kabalo, kinsa na. Or basta nakahuman na. So, that's number one. And then, we have your problem set one, two. Naiuban, wala naka-submit. And then, there is a problem set. No? I'm not sure if sa uban yung problem set na discuss na ba nato. So, yun yung may you have there and then i'm gonna give you a quiz like maybe 10 items and another 10 items per chapter before we'll have our exam and then you can also check uh for those na hindi maka attend uh you can go sa youtube no and then you can view there katong mga miss na lectures niyo for chapter 6 and 7 and so for today, we will be discussing chapter chapter eight. And uh, your question, the I oh, before I forget. We can go na sa. Um, Lecture notes, you can go there and then recorded lectures if ever malangan ko ga code sa YouTube. And then the reference material, you can check non wala mo nag saba nga wala din ako na upload ang 8th edition. Not the 8th edition, the 12th, I think this is the 12th edition. So ako na upload. Anyway, I think naman put my source no sa inyong ebooks, sa inyong mga papers. Tama ba? Okay, so back to our lesson. So last time we had our session, uh, chapter 7, and the last topic that we discussed is the retrosynthetic pathway for the organic synthesis. No? So you will always have to start with uh, your desired product, and then you will have to think what is the closest uh, structure that you can obtain based from your desired uh, product or structure, then you can have your precursor until you can go to the CPS uh, material, starting material, starting, starting compound that you can start. Those are for the organic reactions. And you really need to practice and you have to really discern, you know, uh, is there a familiar structure for that or uh, familiar structure where you can do some reaction to the design products. Okay, so for this chapter, We'll be talking more on the reactions of alkenes and alkynes. So in chapter seven, you already we already started uh, had some reactions of our alkenes, no? Uh, on how to prepare our alkenes and our alkynes based on the hydrohalogenation reaction. So usually we had the elimination reaction and for except for one in the preparation of alkynes, we had and addition reactions. So we will, again, tackle some of that part, uh, the addition reaction, because what you had in chapter seven was the addition reaction of the hydrogen. So you have the hydrogenation reaction to obtain your alkynes. Okay, so this one in chapter eight, this is just a continuation of what we had in chapter seven, the, the most common reactions of alkenes and alkynes, which is the addition reaction and if you remember uh, there i think this there was one i forgot to ask that last time for your problem set no uh i think chapter six chapter six no problem set i give you a problem set that is a more challenging one and if you have time later we'll discuss that uh okay later okay so again i have mentioned that in chapter seven we did additional reactions uh for, for example, alkynes, now you can add hydrogen to produce your alkenes. We have that, uh, we talk about the mechanisms that involve electron pairs in bond forming and bond breaking steps of substitution and elimination reactions. 
Okay, so you were introduced already what substitution and elimination reactions are. You have the SN1, SN2, and E1, E2. And we've learned that nucleophiles and bases serve as electron pair donors in all of these reactions that you have mentioned. For example, uh, in elimination reaction, our instead of a uh, nucleophile, we have a base that can abstract a proton, a hydrogen, a deletion attack on carbon. So in this chapter, we will discuss reactions of alkenes and alkyne in which a double and triple bond act as an electron pair donor for the bond formation. So the usual na to nga nucleophile are and nucleophiles and nucleophiles and uh, bases, of course, you always have to look for an atom that always has an electron pair with it. And one of the source of that is the double bond and the triple bond. And actually, you've learned in chapter seven, no once our our proton from the alkynes also, no once it's abstracted with the base, then you have your alkyl alkynide. No, it can also act as an electron source so to form a bond. In fact, that's one of the bases where you can also increase the number of carbons uh, that would include your triple bond. So in this chapter, we'll be looking at this electron pairs from the double and the triple bond as a source of electrons to do the addition reactions, and they will act as usually as a nucleophile or a base. So we will talk about the regions through chemistry addition reactions of alkenes and processes that can add molecules of water, halogens, carbons, and other functionalities across all canes and what are the processes or events that would cleave double bonds and provide more highly oxidized compounds and then the alkyne reactions that are analogous to alkene. So whatever we've learned sa alkene actually reactions, sa alkenes are similar to what we'll see with alkyne. Okay, it's just that we have to simply increase the number of moles in the same way that we've learned that in chapter seven. So in general, the, the reactions of alkene is what we call as an addition reaction. So in alkene, you have a double bond in it and you have um, a reagent that contains an E electrophile and a new inoculophile in it. And in the addition reaction, one of the species in the reagent, the E part or the electrophile part, will add to one of the carbons and the nucleophile part will add to the other carbon. So they will add and you get one product from two, you get one product, and this is the usual uh, addition reaction. So the addition reaction typically involves the nation of an electron pair from one end of an alkene. So this, this one will uh, will use the electrons from the double bond, from the pi bond, to an electrophile, and followed by a bonding of the nucleophile of the other. So what is what does that mean? Now, we will talk about what is that electrophile and what is that nucleophile. Of course, you already know what the nucleophile is. So we will explain that later. So the general reactions of alkenes, you have actually ending on the reagent that we add. For example, if we have hydrogen halides, no? this H and the X, the halide, will add to this uh, two carbons in the double bond. We have the hydrogen and X. We produce an alkyl halide. If we have our agent water, your H will add to one of the carbons and the OH and the other. We get an alcohol. Or if we have a, a halogen, no, one of the halides will add to the other, to the other one, to the other carbon, and we have a dihaloalkane. And actually, we we have already learned this one in chapter seven already, if I'm not mistaken, right? So why do the reactions occur? The decaying definition is electrophile and nucleophile. So we'll define later. So first we talk about why do the addition reactions occur? So there are, yeah, so ano mag admin sila, but it's the basis, no? So there is several factors that will help us understand why the addition reaction occurs, no? Why the alkene will always add to, uh, to an electrophile and an electrophile. Okay, so first is that the pi electrons present an exposed region. So this is our pi bond here. You have your carbon, carbon, 
This is the electron electrostatic potential map, electron density map for 18, showing the double bond. And you see in here the charge density no, for the electron density for this compound. And we have seen here that here in the center part where you see the double bond, uh, it's more like red. So this means that it contains higher density than the rest of the electrons here. And in the double bond, it's actually a pi bond. No? So you have your sp2 carbon, a carbon that utilizes an sp2 hybrid orbitals to form a bond with the s orbital of hydrogen. The carbon here, uh, because the carbon here utilizes three sp2 hybrid orbitals. So you have sp2, sp2, sp2 forming a sigma bond with hydrogen, a sigma bond with hydrogen here, and carbon here, the sp2 forming a sigma bond with another sp2 here is a carbon. So there is a sigma gaban sp2, sp2 uh, hybrid orbital. Of course, this carbon also utilizes sp2, s sigma bond formation, sp2, s from the hydrogen sigma bond formation head on. But there is this one, the second bond between carbon that utilizes the pi bond. So if you remember how this the pi bond uh, is being formed, it's formed because of the unhybridized p orbitals. If you remember that carbon has four uh, orbitals, right? So sa iyang electron configuration, you will have your two uh, sp2, two s, uh, two electrons and two p uh, electrons, right? So in the sp2, yes, four carbon. So in the uh, in the hybridization process, it utilizes one S orbital and one SP2, two, two uh, P orbitals, okay? So you have SP2 and then of course, when it hybridizes, uh, since you have four unhybridized, it will produce three hybrid orbitals that you have three SP2 and one Unhabitized p orbital. So, did it na balik ato na you have already discussed that in Chem 130. The stuff for carbon, you have an unhybridized p orbital, unhybridized p orbital. And when these two unhybridized p orbital forms a bond, since they are p, no, and there's already a sigma bond that's being formed, they don't, uh, the position of the pi orbitals are. Uh, they are parallel to each other. So what they do is that they do sideways overlap, up and down, and this is the basis of the pi bond. Okay? So here is the electron pair of the pi bond, and it's distributed throughout both lobes of the pi molecular orbital. So there is a imaginary here, a pi unhybridized orbital, remember, pi, sorry, p orbital unhybridized. And if you remember how the p orbital looks like, it's like a two lobes. So when they do sideways overlap to form a pi bond, so this is how the electron pair uh, density uh, of a pi bond looks like, this one. So what about this um, electrons in the pi, uh, pi bond? So the pi electrons present an exposed region of electron density in a molecule, this one. It's actually lying up and below the plane. You have to remember that this one the sp2 carbon is planar, okay? So it's bonded to three atoms and it's planar. The geometry is trigonal planar of oh, these two carbons here. And so the pi electrons is very exposed. It's located up and below the plane of the molecule. And because of that, uh, it's lying that is above and below the sigma bonding framework. All of carbon, hydrogen, this is carbon, hydrogen, carbon, hydrogen, carbon, carbon, they're all sigma bonds. Okay, with, as I mentioned, sp2s, sp2, sp2 here. And so it's this lying up and the low that's very exposed. Now the pi electrons are therefore more available for reactions. So this, because of this, from the planarity of the molecule, this pi orbitals here are lying up and below the thing. They're very exposed. It's easy for this pi bond actually to, for electrons to be donated, you know? because um, first it doesn't utilize the sigma bond and the pi electrons up to the, the pi, the electrons of the pi bond are loosely bound 
it's very unlike the sigma bond no that it's head on overlap ang kanisiya it's just sideways overlap so the pi bond actually is much weaker than the sigma bond and for that the pi electrons from the pi bond no are is very exposed and the electrophiles are easily attracted to the exposed electron dense to the pi band because of this. Like look at this exposure of the pi band. And the pi electrons are in higher energy orbitals than the sigma electrons. Uh, they are in higher energy orbitals than sigma electrons and the bands, pi bands are weaker than the sigma bands. They have already mentioned that. That's because of this reactions that converts the pi bands to sigma bands are usually energetically favorable. As mentioned here, the pi electrons are in higher energy orbitals. So there is a higher energy, no? Or the, the, the pi electrons are of much higher energy than the sigma electrons. And the pi bonds are much weaker, this one. They are much weaker than you can see in the sigma bond. And they're always in high energy orbitals. And that's Let's make it uh, very reactive. It's easy for them, for the pi bonds, rather to use that, convert the pi bonds, this one, convert this pi bond to form a sigma bond. And in alkene addition, therefore, and because of that, no, it's, it's energetically favorable. It's very favorable for this pi bond, for this, pi bond to be converted to form a sigma bond. Again, it's already mentioned here that because pi bonds are weaker and that the pi electrons in the pi bond are of higher energy and therefore it is energetically, energetically favorable for the pi electrons to be converted into a sigma bond. So to better form a sigma bond that's close to an electrophile noise can use that utilized sigma bond to form a it can utilize rather its pi electrons to form a sigma bond with an electrophile to have in here. So as a result, from a pi bond, one pi bond and one sigma bond is being broken, there's actually two sigma bonds that's being formed in the process. And this one is energetically favorable. You have to remember that the pi bonds are, or the pi electrons in the pi bonds are in higher energy orbit not very very reactive and it's compared to the sigma band so the system would rather seek to find a way to form more of form a bond uh, sigma band with other um, atoms and because of that so by definition what how do we define our electrophiles and nucleophiles as we have shown uh, before, an alkene addition re reaction generally involves bonding of reactants that have an electrophile and nucleophile you have in here. You know, when it bonds the double bond, the carbon double bond will have your uh, reaction or forming a bond with like E electrophile and a new nucleophile to have in here. So what is that electrophile? Electrophiles are the R species that are positive and that six electrons. Now they are attracted to sites of negative charge and have the property of being electrophilic. So from the word electrophiles, they seek um, electrons, electrophiles. And usually for them to seek electrons, they are usually um, partially positive or have a positive charge if not positive charge, they are usually partially positive. They are always attracted to the negative charge. The nucleophiles, uh, as we have mentioned, they are electron donors. We have already discussed what nucleophile is, and they are also Lewis bases. No? And as a Lewis base, they are electron donors. And because they have electrons, they are attracted to the positive charge, the positive center. And they have the property of being nucleophilic. So they are nucleus lover. What do you mean by nucleophilic? They are nucleus lover, meaning they are um, they are seeking for atoms uh, having, of course, uh, the nucleus, the positive center nucleus. So that's why they are called nucleophilic because of its rich electron density, and they always seek uh, 
a nucleus, an atom with a nucleus in it being a uh, positive charge. So this nucleophiles will seek electrophiles and electrophiles will seek nucleophiles. So examples of electrophiles are the Bronsted lauric acid, the proton donors, no? uh, such as the Bronsted uh, lauric acids, you've learned that in Chem 3D, the neutral reagents such as bromine, uh, bromine, so for example, Br2, no? uh, because there is this end that is passively charged, can be polarized. One end can be passively charged. So therefore, it can seek and nullify an, an electron rich center. Okay. And can also have Lewis acids, such as those that are have vacant. Um, vacant electrons in their orbitals, lagging firm, in their orbitals. So you have your Lewis acids. Examples of the Lewis acid, you always have to remember this one. Now you have your BH3, BF3, those that are, um, that forms the less than an octet, the boron, okay, BH3, BF3, and then you have your aluminum uh, chloride, those are the common Lewis acids. Of course, there are a lot of uh, Lewis acids. Those are the one that accepts, easily accepts an electron pair. And usually when you look at this electron configuration, there is always a vacant unoccupied orbital for which it can always accept an electron pair. But these are the common examples of Lewis acids. And of course, having that vacant orbital, they always accept um, electrons from nucleophiles. Okay, and other than that, you also have metal ions that contain, you have already mentioned metal ions that contain vacant orbitals. Aside from this, metal ions also are, are also considered actually as Lewis acids. Now you've learned that what Lewis acids and Lewis, base, Lewis bases are in Chem 13B. Lewis acids are those substances that uh, accepts electron pairs and Lewis bases are are species that donate electron pairs. So any species that accepts ele electron pair are Lewis acids. So these are just some of the common examples of the Lewis acids. But you always have to remember also that metal ions are also Lewis acid actually. And uh, the most striking features with this is that they, can, they have a vacant orbital that, that can accept an electron pair. So metal ions are still Lewis acids. Example, you have your silver, mercury, platinum, and because uh, they have vacant pair orbitals, it's possible for them to accept electron pairs from nucleophiles. And because they accept electron pairs, they love electrons, they accept electrons, they're also considered as electrophiles. So on the other hand, so you have here, so, so you can easily see which are electrophiles, those that always seek electrons, those that always seek, can somebody not, um, they carry always electrons, those that are nucleophiles. Okay, so the electrophiles always seek nucleophiles, and nucleophiles always seek electrophiles. Okay, and what else? So, nucleophiles, for nucleophiles, they are electron donors. Whenever you see an atom that has an electron pair with it, there is always that uh, the atom can always be, can always act as a nucleophile. For example, halide. The oxygen and water molecules. So another example of an electrophile is the hydrogen halide. If you remember here, this one proton donors such as Bronsted acids. So hydrogen halide they they, they they associate to donate its hydrogen or proton. Okay, so whenever you have like Bronsted acid like HCl, HBr, they can act as a level as an electrophile, its proton will always seek electrons, okay? So hydrogen halides can, as an, can act or react as an electrophile, okay? With alkenes, by how? By accepting an electron pair from the pi bond. So let's see here, you have X, H, X, and the mice, yeah? But you see here, the hydrogen halide, you have your proton, H, and you have your X here. So Halogens uh, relative to the hydrogens are more electronegative and being an electronegative atom, you see this one, the pink, of course, being an electronegative atom, it draws electrons to itself. 
Okay, permit one. So, ang electron density pa ingon kang halide. So, it will bear the partial negative charge and the H, the proton, will bear partial positive charge. So, it's depleted with electrons. This hydrogen actually will act like a proton. It's very exposed. There's uh, not much electron density on the pro on the hydrogen. So we sometimes call this one to be the proton. And so this one, because it lacks electron density, it's easily attracted to an electron-rich center. As some of electron-rich center, katung na mga electron. So one of the, if it's uh, near an alkene, for example, there is an electron sub pi electrons. Okay, so we can have our source, the pi electrons, We'll seek a positive center that is the proton from our hydrogen halide. So the nucleophile containing the nucleophile from the alkene or the nucleophile no, uh, by virtue of the electrons from the pi electrons will be used to seek a positive center here, the proton. And what will happen is that the H will be formed. You will have a bond that's being formed here, hydrogen and carbon here there is a sigma bond is being formed and once the pi electron is being used to form a bond with hydrogen okay we actually form a carbocation on the other carbon on the second carbon so you have a carbon hydrogen bond formation and there is actually a carbocation that's being formed and once the bond is formed between the pi electron and hydrogen, okay, the bond between X and H, the halide and hydrogen will go to the halogen. Okay, it's being broken and you will free the halide from HX you have in here. So here, this leaves a vacant p orbital you have here. Once this one is being formed, once the pi electron and the hydrogen uh, Pi electron is used to form a bond with hydrogen. You form a bond here, and what actually is left is the other carbon is vacant with an electron, and the carbon will utilize as an sp2 uh, orbital, and there is a vacant p orbital here. So you have a carbocation here, and this carbon now utilizes from sp3 it will utilize as an sp2 hybrid orbital with a positive carbon center here. So the initial result is the formation of the carbocation. So once you have your hydrogen halide reacts as an electrophile and the alkene reacts as a nucleophile, what happens actually is there is this bond formation, carbon hydrogen bond formation, using the electrons from the pi electrons and you will get a carbocation in the process. Okay, so once the carbocation is being uh, formed, then our halide, also can now can act as a nucleophile, okay? And will attack the carbon here, the positive center. This becomes our new uh, electrophile. So the positive and the, the negative and the positive. So the electron rich and the electron deficient. The electron deficient is our electrophile. So this is our electrophile. It will seek an electron rich center. We call this one, the carbocation is also called, will be called our electrophile. It will react with this and you'll form carbon X, okay? But there is two ways for your halogen, for your halide rather, to form a bond with carbon. It can form a bond up or it can up the plane of the carbocation and it will utilize as its electron pair here, no? Or it can form a bond below from the plane of the carbocation from this uh, trigonal planar carbocation here. So there's two ways. In such a way, there, there is two possible stereo product actually that you will see now, that you will get from the, from the halide. You'll get a halide. Your X can be added up or your X can be added down. And with that, there is two different stereochemistry uh, for your halogen, especially if you have, if these two atoms here are different, it's not hydrogen, okay? So that's the basis of the electrophilic addition to an alkene. So if we, sim we will simplify that one, that illustration, simply have this one. The nucleophile can add to the halogen, to the proton rather of our hydrogen halide. And what you will see is either one of the carbon will 
be forming a bond with hydrogen. So let's say this carbon will, will get the share of the hydrogen and will utilize the electron pairs from the pi bond, from the pi bond. And once it forms a bond carbon hydrogen, so this other carbon will be left behind to be passively charged. Okay, once the carbon here, one of the carbon utilizes the electron pair from the pi bond, okay, you have the carbon hydrogen and once the bond is formed, the bond from XH will go to the halide and get your free halide. And for the second step, you will have that halide, your nociphile to attack the electrophile here. Okay, so you form a bond CX. So you have 